What better setting for the start of Pac-12 play than with a Rocky and Gill Coliseum for the 345th edition of the Civil War? Welcome to Sunday Sports Extra, everyone. I'm Ben Creighton. Well, on September 4th, we know that a quarterback will lead the Beavers down this ramp onto the field here at Research Stadium for the first time. Now, coming out in front of a large crowd can be quite a nerve-wracking moment, but for the three QBs competing for the starting job, today's scrimmage provided an early taste of that tension. No doubt a gratifying moment for Scott Ruick and the Beavers to make it here to the Final Four, especially when you look at how far they've come. Back in 2010, when Ruick first took over the Beavers, he had to hold open trials just to make sure they even had a team to compete that year. So definitely an unbelievable feat, taking this team from the depths to this current stage. Jarmo Reed told me after the game that it was really hard to swallow knowing that was his final game for Oregon State and his only appearance in the NCAA tournament. At the same time, Gary Payton II, who's bound for an NBA career, told me in the locker room that he's had a heck of a two years in Corvallis and wishes he had four. Other than the huge road win against the Huskies a couple weeks ago, the city of Seattle hasn't been too welcoming for the Ducks as they have yet to win a Pac-12 tournament game since the tournament moved to Key Arena a couple years ago. As a matter of fact, the last time the Ducks won a conference tournament game was way back in 2008 when the tournament was in San Jose and also the Pac-12 was still the Pac-10. Now guys, a little bit of a it's a small world scenario, but this is actually the second straight season where VCU's Corey Bilberry will face Oregon State. The last time coming in 2014 when he was with Oral Roberts. Now, Bill Burry recalled Gary Payton II and said it was a sight to see to watch him play defense, especially against Obi Megano, who at the time was one of the nation's leading scorers. Let's go back to Katie McWilliams for a second, obviously having to step in for Sid. What have you seen in her progression and how big is it to, for her personally, just been thrown into the fire so quickly in just her freshman year? Now, while the team is focused on beating UConn, several players are relishing the moment to take on this Husky squad. Sydney, we said it'll be a privilege to face this team, while Jamie Weisner said it's going to be something that she's going to tell her kids about 20 years down the line. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant once said records don't mean a thing in rivalry games. Clearly, he's never visited Western Oregon in February when one of the oldest college basketball rivalries holds so much more value than just bragging rights. You know, Chris, and I only had my dad as a head coach just once in my life. You had to go all the way back to my elementary school basketball days the last time that happened. But now we get to see a similar instance at the collegiate level up in Corvallis. It will definitely be a homecoming of sorts for Brady Hoke. But instead of donning the orange and black again, similar to when he was the defensive line coach at Oregon State decades ago, He'll be about 50 miles south in the green and yellow, hoping to turn a struggling Oregon defense around as the Ducks' new defensive coordinator. January 18, 2015, trailing 19-7 to with four minutes left in the game, the Seattle Seahawks pulled off the improbable to punch their ticket to the Super Bowl, beating the Packers in overtime. Now, almost one year to the day on January 17th, facing, again, extraordinary odds late in the game. The Hawks look for more playoff magic in order to knock off the NFC's top seed. and Matt Lubick making his debut as offensive coordinator. And what a good start to his new duties in the first. Vernon Adams, with lots of time in the pocket, finds a wide open Darren Carrington for the touchdown. Duck strike first out of the gate, 7-0 Carrington, wearing number 22 to honor his late friend Markel Bird. Then the Black Mama doing what he does best, being a killer late in the game. Splash, hits the three. And this is greatness admiring greatness, Jay-Z. Impressed, one point game. Then with 30 left, the signature fall away. Knocks it down to give the Lakers the lead. He would hit two more free throws to give LA a three point lead and give them 60 on the night. But the Buckeyes respond in a big way. A lot of bursts of speed today all over college football. Ezekiel Elliott finds a hole and goodbye. 47 yards to the score, 35 21. Buckeyes Elliott's fourth touchdown of the day. And yeah, this is the reaction from every OSU fan today, I'd imagine. Elliott eating, doing work on the day. The juniors' four TDs help Ohio State get the 44-28 victory. In the second OT, off the loose ball, Gabe York half court for the win. No. So third time's a charm, right? Jordan McLaughlin fires, and he can't connect on the game winner. Fourth overtime, Elijah Stewart drives and hits the lay-in. 101-99 Trojans with two minutes left. Final seconds, Gabe York poked away. Kadeem Allen for the win off the mark hands down the biggest win in years for usc easily the biggest in the andy enfield era at least i'm very confident of how he's going to handle it i think 
he's a kid where he's going to block everything out and just play. If he plays and let everybody see that he's he's got a scholarship here because of his athletic ability and because of the basketball player he is, I think everybody will just put that in the back burner. They'll be like, this kid can play. They didn't just give him a scholarship because he's Gary Payton's son. I think he he can play the, he can play in this, at this level, and I think he's going to go to the next level because he can play and he's proven himself that. So I have no worries about him coming here and proving himself. They often say father knows best, but even with an early nomination for Pac-12 Player of the Year, the molding of a new generation would begin with the tension of living up to those who came before. For 17 seasons, Gary Payton lit up the NBA with his speed, lockdown defense, and of course that legendary trash talk, leading to a Hall of Fame career, but insurmountable expectations from others for his own flesh and blood, specifically GP senior son, Gary Payton II. It was uh, kind of hard, you know, in high school. You know, people expecting you to be as great as your father uh, instantly just because who your father was playing basketball. Going into high school, you know, from a Junior, junior high school, you know, uh, I really kind of put it aside my, my first two years in high school and just kind of hung, hung out and been, been a regular kid. But failing to put basketball as his top priority led to the boiling point. One night after one of his high school games, Gary Payton blew up at his son, telling him he didn't have the skills to play college basketball. It was just, uh, you know, him coming to my high school games, you know, and I'm not uh, playing as he would he would have liked me to play at that at that age and time so uh i think we just he just built it up and i didn't know how to respond to it or anything before i handled it differently when i was young i didn't know how to so i just uh, let him get to me and uh, it took me completely out of my game and i didn't want to play anymore there was a point that i told him that i didn't like him coming to my games anymore so uh i think that had a little bit to do with it but it was just i think it was just that time for him to you know just man up and just tell me and how to take it but really just uh, looking at yourself in the mirror, you know, you know, uh, just look at yourself and, and it's really a gut check. You know, he told me that uh, he wouldn't pay for my, my, my school beyond high school. So it was either uh, get a scholarship or, you know, I was going to have to get a job. So, you know, I just, I just took the challenge and I wanted to prove him wrong. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job of that. Because of that wake up call, the then junior at Spring Valley High School, who once wasn't sure whether he loved the sport or not, rapidly developed every facet of his game leading to a year at West Wind Prep, then on to Salt Lake Community College, landing him a second-team junior college All-America. Then, the big time came calling. With the encouragement from his father letting his son choose where he'd want to go, GP2 arrived to Corvallis, this time embracing the upcoming comparisons to his predecessor. He said, uh, go wherever you're, you know, you, you, you can wake up and you can be happy when you wake up every day and, uh, and go to school and play basketball. It was just a challenge I decided to take. And I knew, the, I knew everything that I was going to have be ex expectations for it coming here, and I just, I just took the challenge. You know, there's going to be comparisons just because, you know, I'm here and, and he, he was here. But uh, I think a lot of people have seen that uh, we're two different players, and we go about it two different ways. He had his time back in the, in the 90s, and I have mine now. And, you know, we have some similarities, but, uh, you know, I think we're two different basketball players. But while there were early growing pains adjusting to the Division One game, Peyton eventually helped bring excitement back to Oregon State basketball while winning Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, reminiscent of the days his dad helped lead the Beavs to the big dance. He had surely come a long way since being told he couldn't play at the highest level. I think about that every day. It's just, it's just crazy what, what hard work you know, pays off. I just sat there and I was just thinking, like, this is, this is wow. Like, I would have never thought in so little time I can, I can be here doing these things. It's crazy that... Uh, that, uh, that we changed the program around, changed the community around, and uh, everybody's, everybody's back at Gill. You know, we haven't had a Gill pack, and so many people told me in, in years, so um, I'm blessed to be a part of that team. Now, with his time in Corvallis quickly coming to a close, and an NBA career appearing on the horizon, the younger Peyton thanks his dad every chance he can for the tough love that kick-started his focus on basketball. Without it, he wouldn't be the college star he is today. I just tell him always that uh, thank you for pushing me and uh, if it really wasn't for him and the rest of my family for pushing me and believing in me, uh, who knows how I would be right now. Just how incredibly uh, I turned my life around in such a little time, 
you know, uh, it wasn't it wasn't easy. There was times where I wanted to wanted to quit and give up, but uh, I had the great support system with my family and my friends. My mentors just uh, just dug it out and keep going and just fight, and it's, uh, it all pay off in the end. You know, Gary was was the great one here, and his son is coming here. We're very happy for that, and I think that's what he's he made his decision to come here. Why for?